Hello everybody, uh, my name is Greg Allen. I was the uh, one of the co-founders of the Clock Jordan Eco Village uh, in Clock Jordan. Um, and what that was doing was looking at how you can um, give a practical demonstration of sustainable development and rural regeneration. And I think it links very closely into all the discussions this morning and the, the uh, Irish Walled uh, Town Network. Um, that I do think there's a huge opportunity for towns and villages around Ireland to look at. Um, it's only one or two or generations previously where these towns and villages were more self-sufficient than what they are now. And if you look at all the different elements from food security, energy security, sustainable transport and local employment, all those can be integrated and actually uh, give a lot more uh, security to towns and villages around Ireland and what I'm talking about now in particular is is energy and where energy comes from and as you probably are aware that Ireland is very dependent on fossil fuels and um, huge amounts of electricity are imported uh, and <coughs> wind is one option you have solar you have, you have hydro uh, and I'm going to just tell the story of Templary Wind Farm because I think most people here have been involved in different projects and what you'd all be very aware of is that you need tenacity and you need staying power and you need to overcome obstacles um, and this is, is a testament. The one thing I would say is that it's the only community owned wind farm in the country which is great in one respect but it's a sad indictment of where we are as a country that there is only one community farm. If you look at Scotland or if you look at mainland Europe there are community owned uh, wind farms and solar farms all across Europe. We have one and this is partly the reason why um, is the challenges that were faced. Um, it was set up in um, a local committee in 1999 looked research the area of Temple Dairy to look at what would be the best solution for their community based on what the natural resources and, and the geographical layout of the area was um, and out of that came uh, a wind farm was seen as the best solution for the area so they established Templary Wind Farm in uh, 2000 <coughs> they offered shares to the local community uh, they hold, held public consultation meetings got the local community involved there was 32 shares taken up by residents in the community and they also allocated two shares to the local temp Templary Development uh, cooperative and that was to support people who uh, didn't either have the capacity to purchase a share or to ensure that some of the, the revenue from the wind farm would go back into community-based projects for the benefit of Temple Dairy itself uh, and all, all shareholders are restricted to one share and it's very democratic in its approach that it's one share one vote um, so the history as I said, it was set up in 2000. Um, they went through the, the feasibility <coughs> process um, and then they applied for a grid connection. Um, and again, this all had to be financed and, and they had a, a kind of a milestone approach to it that as, as the project developed, they went back to the shareholders to say, could you uh, invest a little bit more money? They were given a, a grid offer um, and at the same time they were going through the planning process and they, they managed to, to secure planning permission but when they got the grid offer uh, at the time ESB Networks put a moratorium on any grid connections because they wanted to upgrade the network so they were left kind of sitting on their hands for two years and as that happened the planning permission was running out uh, the first time they submitted the planning application there was no objections um, they were advised to go in for planning because by the time uh, the grid connection was true, the planning would have run out, they went for planning again. This time some people had moved into the area and actually lodged objections so they ended up having to go through on board Planola which again delayed the project. Um, and then eventually after going through the bo on board Planola uh, they got the planning permission and grid connection uh, but the financial collapse happened. This was 2007, 2008. So they didn't, they couldn't raise the finance. They were quite advanced with Triodos Bank, which is a social investment bank, based in, in the UK. Uh, but Triodos Bank pulled out. Um, so they were left with um, grid and planning and no money. 
and obviously they were approached by large developers to say, well, we'll take it off your hands, and, um, but they were very determined to know this has to be community-based, community-owned, and they negotiated a deal with the wind turbine manufacturers where they actually financed or they installed the turbines and used the bank that um, uh, actually financed the manufacturing of the turbines. Uh, to actually secure finance and then they also launched a BES scheme. So a combination of working with the turbine manufacturers and their bank and then a BES scheme, they, they managed to uh, secure the finance. Um, they have two turbines, 2.3 megawatt each, um, and they started generating in November 2012 and it was officially opened, uh, Pat Rabbit at the time was the Minister for Energy, uh, and it was officially opened uh, in 2013. And as part of this uh, challenge, and this took from 2000, the year 2000 to 2012, so it took 12 years of tenacity and, and challenges all the way through to get the turbines turning. And they also had to take a lot of financial risk themselves. There's a lot of money involved in grid connection, the planning process, the feasibility, uh, and this just demonstrates why uh, there isn't more community-based projects in Ireland. In Scotland it's really interesting that they have a scheme uh, supported by the government that will pay for, or, or you get a grant to go through the feasibility uh, and grid and planning, and if you are successful the grant is, is repayable to the state, if you're unsuccessful it's written off. And what that does is it, it de-risks it from a community-based uh, concept, you know, where it's primarily volunteers not being paid, and you're you're supposed to compete against large developers with deep pockets. Uh, and this is one of the challenges of actually getting community-owned uh, generation projects going in Ireland, where there's more support for communities at that level. And during this time, what the community in Temple Derry did as well is they set up a, a supply company. Uh, as part of the process when they were going through the, the 12 years of actually trying to get the turbines built. Um, and it's, it's Temple Dairy Renewable Energy Supply, it's, it's trading as CRES, uh, and that's my role is, is to try and develop that. It's a licensed supply company, so what we're doing is we're offering opportunities to small generators that have hydro or solar, uh, the opportunity to sell their surplus uh, and get paid for it. So we have a number of small hydro projects, um, obviously the wind farm, but again, the, the wind farm, the, the irony of the whole situation is that because they were trying to secure finance um, and uh, when they went to the, the banks, the banks were saying they had set up this supply company and the idea was that the supply company would actually sell the generation and potentially you could supply the power locally, but the banks said, well, this is an off-the-shelf company, you, we need something that's more reputable, so they had to get a power purchase agreement with one of the large utilities. So the irony is, is that they're actually generating and uh, uh, they can't really supply themselves because the, the PPA is with one of the large utilities. But this uh, licensed supply company, we we're, uh, we're supplying, uh, we have 40 customers now uh, and we purposely have looked at local people in, in Temple Derry. We're supplying them with electricity. Uh, there's the local leisure centre in Ross Grey and Turles. Uh, there's a shopping centre in uh, Dublin. So what we are doing is taking a broad sample of all the different types of users of electricity uh, with a view to growing this uh, supply company um, where we can offer an alternative to the large kind of utility companies. It's community owned. As Avril was saying, we're involved with a European project where we're looking also at the whole concept of virtual power plants and microgrids and how you can actually generate locally and supply locally. Uh, where we have three solar farms uh, ready to go, but this is linked into the, the RES scheme, the Renewable Energy Support Scheme, uh, which has been talked about for years. It was supposed to be launched this year. This is why there's no solar, real solar development in Ireland from solar on, on farms and on domestic buildings, that there's no feed-in tariff, no guaranteed price, so the economics don't work. Um, but we have, and, and what we've been doing as well is lobbying the government to say that uh, communities need to be um, 
treated differently than the large developers. So to try and ring fence some of the renewable energy support schemes specifically for community-based projects. Uh, because if you're competing against large developers as a community, it's hugely challenging. Uh, but what we hope will happen, we're going to do a large launch uh, when this RES scheme comes in and we want to offer shares to the local community and the general public to be owners of the first community-owned solar farm in the country and hopefully there'll be plenty more. And then when we have that generation along with the wind farm uh, to grow the customer side, we're going through a process now of actually uh, becoming a large supplier. So by the end of this year, we'll be able to grow potentially to 25,000 customers and to communities and to uh, also what we're looking at is where you, you have a solar installation on your roof and at the moment, it's just spilled into the grid and you get nothing for your surplus, uh, is that we want to offer the opportunity for individuals to actually get paid for the surplus that they generate. So that's, and, and what is interesting is that um, the solar farm, the, the generation or the, the revenue generation per year is anything between 1 to 1.2 million euros every year. Now there's huge repayment costs for the, for the capital costs and then the maintenance of the turbines is quite expensive. Uh, but within the next five to seven years, everything will be paid off. Then that money is going into the community and can be reinvested in different projects. And that's what the Temple Dairy community have done already is that they ha have never taken a dividend. But what they're doing is investing in the likes of CRES and community power and also investing in uh, grid connection and solar or planning permission for solar farms to support other communities around the country. We're, we're involved with Clare Mars and Iron Islands and uh, there's another group of communities in Tipperary called Energy Communities Tipperary and then Tate House and Limerick. All of us working together to try and promote uh, uh, the concept of community owned uh, supply and, and generation. And this all came out from a community based project and it just shows the potential that's out there if communities are given an opportunity. Um, as I said, the only reason there is one community-owned solar farm is it took 12 years and, and the challenges that they face without any major support from central government. Um, so that's a very quick overview. Um, I'll, I'll kind of leave it for questions now if anyone has any questions. Thank you.